If we want a competitive Europe which creates jobs, then people and goods have to be able to move around easily and quickly, and without harming the environment. That's the aim of the Trans-European Transport Network, a huge continental-scale programme that will interconnect the national transport infrastructures to create a genuine trans-European network. A réseau trans-européen, c'est vraiment le maillage qui permet une libre circulation des personnes et des biens en Europe. Nous avons besoin de ces grands axes ferroviaires, fluviaux, maritimes, routiers, autoroutiers. Il faut que du nord au sud et de l'est à l'ouest, il y ait une circulation sans congestion. Cette congestion qui coûte aujourd'hui pratiquement l'équivalent du budget européen, 1% du produit intérieur brut. Although initiated at the beginning of the 90s, the Trans-European Transport Network has not yet attained its ambitious goals. It's run into financing problems and difficulties with cross-border coordination. Meanwhile, road traffic in Europe is constantly on the rise. However, solutions exist. Goods transported by road today can be switched to other, less polluting means of transport, such as rail, waterways or sea transport. This is referred to as modal transfer, or moving from one mode of transport to another that is less used. This solution is strongly encouraged by Europe. Le jour où vous avez un train de marchandises qui ne met pas plus de temps pour aller de Madrid à Varsovie qu'un camion, vous pouvez à ce moment-là offrir un véritable, une véritable alternative et vous pouvez combiner utilement un ferroviaire qui, sur la longue distance, consomme moins d'énergie et est plus favorable à l'environnement, avec le service toujours très utile du camion pour assurer les dessertes que le ferroviaire ne peut pas assurer. In this context, rail offers important potential for easing traffic on major trans-European roads. That's why the European Union wants to reinvigorate trans-European railway projects. It's identified five fundamental railway axes where progress is not being made quickly enough due to difficulties of various kinds. The five railway axes the Union intends to take forward on a priority basis are paris Bratislava, which will improve connections with the new member states, Lyon Budapest, or the east west corridor south of the Alps, the high speed southwest Europe axis connecting France to the Iberian Peninsula, Berlin Palermo, or the north south corridor of Central Europe, and Rail Baltica, which will connect Helsinki to Warsaw via the Baltic states. To give impetus to these projects, the European Union has appointed important public figures to serve as European coordinators for the different axes. Their assignment is to bring the member states involved together, to come up with solutions to the problems and to speed up project execution. Pour cette synchronisation financière, administrative et technique, il faut en effet un homme qui coordonne les États membres, les régions traversées, les acteurs, compagnies ferroviaires. Et c'est pour ça que sur chacun des cinq grands axes retenus, nous avons choisi un coordonnateur. A sixth coordinator has been appointed to oversee the implementation of a trans-European industrial project, the European Rail Traffic Management System, ERTMS. This project is crucial to ensuring an excellent network that is safe, reliable and interoperable. Il s'agit d'un système de signalisation et de contrôle de la vitesse du train qui sera désormais le même sur l'ensemble du réseau ferroviaire. Car il faut savoir qu'aujourd'hui, il y a au moins 20 systèmes différents de signalisation et de contrôle. In time, the new rail lines and the improvement of existing lines throughout the network will enable millions of Europeans and companies to enjoy better mobility on a continental scale. That's essential for a more competitive Europe.